All right, um, so in this video I'll be talking about uh, Adam Moulton applied to a nonlinear equation. So we talked about in the last video the set of equations we get a complete nonlinear in terms of y1 to yn. So uh, we plugged in i equal 1 to n minus 1 here and yn minus 1 because the highest index we have is i plus 1 and if we plug i equal n minus 1 the maximum index we get is yn. So that means we cannot put i equal n, otherwise we get y n plus 1, which doesn't exist. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this system, because this is nonlinear. We have to we have to calculate the Jacobian. So the Jacobian is the first is the derivative of the first equation with respect to all the unknowns. Okay, so let's look at the unknown list. The list of unknowns actually start from y2. We know y1 from the boundary condition. So unknowns start from y2 all the way to yn. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and get the derivative of this equation with respect to y2. Okay, so we get 1 here, del x over 2, x2, and then times the exponential of y2. There's no other unknown here, the rest is 0 here. Okay, second drawing the Jacobian is going to be the derivative of the second equation with respect to all unknowns. The first unknown would be y2, well it's going to be minus 1 minus the x over 2, x2 exponential of y2. The second unknown is y3, so the derivative of this with respect to y3 is going to be 1 minus the x over 2, and then times x3 a exponential of y3. There's no more unknown, it's going to be 0 afterwards. So this big zeros means basically everything else is 0. All, all, the only thing I have is just the diagonal and then the sub-diagonal. So we're going to do one more equation. Let's say we're going to do the last one uh, in the Jacobian. The last row corresponds to the derivative of the last equation with respect to all unknowns. Okay. So the derivative of this with respect to y2, it's going to be 0 because there's no y2. With respect to y3, 0. With respect to y4, 0. All the way to with respect to yn minus 1. I get minus 1 minus the x over 2, xn minus 1, exponential of yi minus 1. All right, and then the derivative of this with respect to yn is going to be 1 minus the x over 2, which is down here, and then times xn exponential of yn, right? So this is going to be my Jacobian. The goal is to solve this system, which has n minus 1 equations, and they're nonlinear using Newton solver. Okay, so the Newton, um, according to the Newton's equation, the iteration k plus 1, uh, the solution to the iteration k plus 1, which is now y k plus 1, y y is now vector, which includes y2 all the way to yn, is equal to the same vector at k minus Jacobian inverse times g. So this g is nothing but the system of equations we have, okay? And um, and then J is the Jacobian, which we calculated. Initial condition is going to be, well, or in other words, the, the, the guess value. So the, for the guess value, we have to, let's say, set everything to something. In this case, I just set everything to 1. OK, so now we're going to look at the script from this point on, how we can basically go ahead and solve the system. All right, so this is nonlinear implicit, which is this one, all right, so initially we set uh, the g vector, okay, the Jacobian, we set them to the right dimensions, n minus 1, we create the x, delta x, tolerance, maximum iteration, you just create the you know, exact solution to compare against, um, after we solve for the solution, uh, boundary condition at x equals 0, y is equal to 1, and so we have the loop that actually cycles through uh, the iteration steps. And um, so basically we have to create uh, this Jacobian. So if, if, you, if you look at the Jacobian, you see the Jacobian actually has pattern to it. First row, well, the first row is different. Other than the first row, everything is only two elements. One, two, one, two. Even the last row has one, two elements. So we're going to go by row construction. When row is 1, we have only one element, 1 minus del x, and then x times y. And that's 1 minus del x, x times y, and that should be y2. Means when 
and IP is equal to 2, right? Um, I get x times y, that's right. And then for all other rows, I get three elements. Uh, I'm sorry, we get two elements, minus 1 minus the lex, and then 1 minus the lex. And you see that minus 1 minus the lex, and then 1 minus the lex, and then the rest of it, which I have right here. Okay, so now we have a Jacobian, we have... Uh, now we need to construct a g, which is the right-hand side. So g is nothing but we have to evaluate these equations, moving everything to the right, to the left of the, equal, the, the equality, or the equal sign. So the first g is going to be this, right? Um, so we're going to go ahead and implement that one. It's going to be when i is equal to 2, right? And then it's going to be y2 minus del x over x2 e to the y2, okay? So that's up to here, and then minus y1 minus del x over 2 x1 y1. Okay, so and that's what we have here. Minus y1 del x over 2 x1 e to the y1. Okay, so this is for all other roads except for row 1. Um, in fact, this is actually for all rows, so it doesn't matter. Okay, so now we have the G, we have the Jacobian, we can go ahead and iterate. So we do the backslash operative Jacobian, backslash G, from here we solve for, we solve for this piece, right? We have to subtract this from YK, and that's what we have here. So we we'll subtract this from YK, and we know that we only subtract from 2 to N because we know Y1. So we iterate as long as the difference between the two y values, the y old and y. And so what is y old? Well, after we calculate the Jacobian, we set the previous y to y old, and then here we update y. So as long as the difference between y and y old is less than tolerance, we just you know quit this loop and then print the result. If we hit the maximum iteration, then we find the error. Um, at the end, we compare the exact solution in blue, and um, Adam Milton in red. The rest is just uh, you know changing the fonts and everything else. So let me go ahead and run that. So you see that in uh, in sixth iteration we get the solution. This quadratic rate of convergence shows that the Jacobian is right. And if you look at the solution, so the exact is blue. Adam Milton is. Is, is red and you see that they're very close because Adam Milton is second order and uh, well it has to be you know smaller than the first order methods first order methods like uh, backward euler or forward euler okay so I showed you a non-linear uh, equation where we use the implicit method for we also looked at a linear equations where we use the same, you know, Adam Milton or implicit method. So implicit method has nothing to do with linearity and non-linearity of the equations that come out. Okay. The linearity or non-linearity depends on the differential equation itself. And particularly that depends on the right hand side of dy dx. All right. Okay, so we already talked about stability. Right, um, but here uh, I want to talk about actually the detail of how we can derive the stability. So for stability, as we discussed before, we look at a toy problem, and um, the goal here is to see if um, if we know the exact solution such that the exact solution, let's say, has a form of a decaying function. We compare it with the numerical solution, and if numerical solution, you know, does not have a decaying form, let's say, and actually it's uh, it's rising as x increases, or it's increasing as x as x increases, and that means that's a stable, that's an unstable solution because the solution should go down, but the numerical solution is going up, so that's exactly opposite. Okay, so. Most of stability analysis actually are based on this toy problem, okay, or we call it a generic problem, okay. So, remind you that I'd like to remind you that uh, you know in stability, uh, the issue we are one we, we are concerned about is if the solution actually gets bad for large x or large you know independent variables. 
So uh, the solution may look good initially for small x values, but as you go to large x values, suddenly you know, the solution becomes bad. So that's called instability. And that's different from inaccuracy. Inaccuracy means the solution is actually bad even at small x. Okay. All right. So the, prior, the toy problem we're not going to look at is dy dx equal lambda times y. Why we look at this toy problem? Because we know the solution of this. This is very simple. And we can easily catch the instability if there is any instability in a problem. Okay. Let's say the initial condition is at equal at x equals zero. We have some why not. Okay, so we go ahead and solve this. This is a very simple problem. We can solve for analytical solution by splitting the y in x. And if you split the y and integrate, then we get y is equal to some constant times exponential of y times let's say x. This should be x actually. It's my it's a typo here. When there's an x, there should be x not time. But anyways, um, and so at x equals zero, we get y not exactly the boundary condition. Okay, fine. Now imagine lambda is imaginary. Okay, if lambda is imaginary and the real part of lambda is less than zero, right? Then this function is going to be decaying function. The imaginary part of lambda leads to oscillation, like sinusoidal function, and the real part of it leads to either in uh, decaying or or rising function. Okay. So if the real part is negative, that means the function is decaying, and it does not lead to instability because instability is if the function at long at large x actually goes or increases. So if a real part of lambda is less than zero, then at large x, y is going to be going down, or y is going to be decreasing. That's why we look at the real part of lambda, and we focus on lambdas whose real part is actually less than zero. Okay, so we call it um, the stability part is where the real lambda is less than zero, or not growing in magnitude. Okay, so when t goes to limit, then exponential is always less than 1, which means if I look at the imaginary of lambda as a function of real part of lambda in, in this two-dimensional space, right, then the stability region is on the second and third quadrant, where the real lambda is less than 0, right? So any point that lies in this region it's going to be stable, and anything on the right side of the y-axis is going to be unstable. So that depends on lambda, actually. Okay? So keep that in mind. Real lambda less than zero is stable, left half of the plane, and real lambda bigger than zero means unstable. Okay. So let's apply this toy problem, the stability test, to the forward Euler and see why forward Euler was, was, in, was unstable. I think in one of the videos in the past I showed you that you know, when lambda goes large for forward Euler, initially it was good, but then the, the, the solution actually goes oscillatory and we had two parts, positive and negative parts. And anyway, so we discussed that in, uh, explicit Euler is unstable. That's why we started talking about implicit methods. Okay. All right. So, um, so in forward Euler, the forward difference, uh, we discard that we discretize the left hand side y plus one minus y i divided by del x is equal to the function on the right side equal to well at at, uh, at the lower index i so it's going to be uh, x i y i okay we apply this to toy problem the toy problem f was land y remember that the right hand side it was land y so we're going to replace f by land y but it's going to be land y i because that's what that was y i so it's going to be land y i then from here, the unknown is going to be the highest index, i plus 1. We're going to solve for only the one unknown y plus 1. It's, it's going to be 1 plus del x times lambda from here times yi, where I move this yi to the right side and factor it out. Okay, fine. Uh, we, we redo this for all other y's. For yi, we can do the same thing. For i1 minus 1, we can do the same thing. And we put them together. Once we do that, we see that we can relate y i plus one to just y zero. Okay. So in the next video, I'll show you how we can go from here and prove that this leads to unstable method. So stay tuned and thanks for watching.